Hello, and welcome to this month's Start From Within offering, The Five Senses Meditation. If you're not familiar with who I am, I'm Tanisha Williams. Welcome. And if you're unfamiliar with the Start From Within series, I'm glad you're joining us. So first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am a consultant who regularly helps educators and school leaders recognize and address biases, manage emotions, navigate tension and conflict, and promote equity and wellness through a range of social and emotional services. The Start From Within series is a series that highlights exercises and tools to help you increase your self-awareness, cultivate a healthy emotional capacity, and promote equity and wellness. You can head over to startfromwithin.com to learn more and to see our other videos. We have videos on core values, stabilizing practices, and a somatic choice board. If you purchase the start, excuse me, if you purchase the From Within workbook, then you'll notice some of the exercises within this series um, that showed up in the workbook. If you're interested in learning more about the workbook, head over to fromwithinworkbook.com. This is an equity-centered social and emotional learning resource for educators, and it's also interactive so that you can fill in the workbook as you go. So here's what you can expect throughout today's video. First, I'll share what is a five senses meditation, and then we'll talk about the purpose and the benefits. We'll then go through the five senses meditation. I'll lead you through the guided meditation and we'll finish up by doing variations, talking about some of the different ways that you can do this meditation. And I'll also share some facilitation tips. My dog Nemo just joined us. I'm gonna shut that door. I'll be right back. All right, let's get started. So what is the five senses meditation? Well, the five senses meditation is a mindfulness practice. It's a type of meditation that helps you to get keenly aware about what's happening in the moment and around you. And we're going to be doing this through utilizing our five senses, the sense of sight, touch, hearing, smelling, and taste. Um, this is a short meditation. It's a grounding exercise. It can help you to get present in the moment um, without really worrying about what's going to happen in the future or trying to relive and change the past. When you check in with your five senses, it's also helping to create a mind-body connection, helping you tune in to who you are, what, how you are in your current environment. There are many purpose, there are many benefits to this meditation. So let me first share the purpose with you. One is to have a mindful moment, just to pause and be present with where you are and how you're doing in the moment. This particular meditation can also help you to get really familiar with your environment. Sometimes I notice things that I hadn't noticed before when I was going um, at a rapid pace. And I get more um, focused in on particular things around me when I'm slowing down. This is also a great meditation if you are trying to get recentered or grounded, especially after a moment of um, agitation or just where your nervous system is really activated. And this meditation can also help you to pause any racing thoughts so that you can really focus in on what you want to be thinking about or doing in the moment. So again, there are many benefits. I'm gonna highlight just a few. The pictures that you're about to see are from a trip that I took to the Redwoods Forest. And I actually did the five senses meditation there as a way to really just take in that environment fully. So enjoy the visuals. One of the benefits of this meditation is to reduce stress. Um, by, again, stopping racing thoughts and helping us to get grounded and centered, then we are reducing our stress. We're also strengthening our self-command muscle, right? So really helping our brain say, hey, here's where I want to focus. 
that quiets the negative thoughts and it activates positive regions of the brain that help us, um, you know, with creativity, that help us to also act in alignment with our core values and intentions. Another benefit of this meditation is increased focus and concentration. This meditation can also help you strengthen your own self-awareness and responsiveness, again, by really um, becoming aware of how you're feeling in your body and also by practicing and strengthening that self-command muscle, you are going to be strengthening your ability to be responsive versus reactive. This meditation can also help you settle your nervous system because again, it's helping you to really slow down your breathing and that slows down your heart rate, which can calm us down, especially again, when we're coming from a really agitated or activated situation. And it's also a way of helping us to act and respond in alignment with our core values and intentions. And that's because as we're practicing pausing and slowing down, it's then a practice that we can integrate into our daily lives. We don't always have to wait to do a five or 10 minute meditation, but that particular act of just self-commanding, like, whoop, let's pause for a moment, checking in with ourselves, how am I feeling? And considering how we want to respond versus just immediately reacting, that's gonna help us over time, especially in moments where we're needing to respond to bias, discrimination. Now, a bonus that I haven't talked about is that this particular meditation can also help you just have a more enhanced experience. When I was in the Redwoods and just in that area, well, I will say I was nervous. I mean, just there was so much forest around me and I found myself getting, um, I guess you could say scared, right? Or frightened, like, is anyone else here that I don't see or that I don't notice? And I had to really say, like, let's calm our nervous system. Let's take in what's around us. So I did the five senses of meditation. And not only did it help me to calm my nervous system and to experience that setting in a really abundant way, but I also had an enhanced experience of the Redwoods in general. Now, before we move forward to doing the five senses meditation, I do want to note that I've had some folks with chronic pain or also folks with sensory sensitivities share that sometimes this meditation can be challenging to do because they're already sometimes so focused on particular, um, like some pain within their body or with particular senses that it feels like it's actually activating that or heightening, increasing that. And so I would again say, check in with your body as you're doing this meditation. If this is not the meditation that works well for you, try on another one. Additionally, you could try a variation where you only focus in on one particular sense instead of going through all five. And I'll talk about some additional variations as we go through. So if you purchase the From Within workbook, the five senses meditation actually complements the get grounded in the now chapter, which you can find from pages 61 through 63. And again, if you're interested in learning more about this resource, head over to fromwithinworkbook.com. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing um, this screen and also let you know that if you want to follow along, with us, you can download a PDF of the five senses meditation by going to startfromwithin.com or by accessing the shop on my website. And let me actually, you cannot see what it is that I'm sharing. So let me pause and reshare screen so that you can see this. Okay, so this is what the resource looks like. This is the five senses meditation PDF and it gives you an opportunity to, again, print this, have it in your space. Um, this particular resource is going to be 50% off for the next 30 days. So this is, if you're seeing this past May of 2023, it's probably not on sale anymore. However, access to all of the five um, 
the start from within videos is always free. Just this resource is a paid resource. So now I'm going to stop sharing screen and we're going to move into the five senses meditation, which will be a guided practice. One thing to note is that my five senses meditation, or rather the way that I facilitate it, follows a five, four, three, two, one grounding technique where we count down as we pay attention to the senses. So again, want to make a, um, a note here that if you are someone who experiences chronic pain or has sensory sensitivities, pay attention to what's happening in your body and assess if this is the right meditation for you. If it's not, try on another meditation or consider a variation like just focusing in on one sense at a time or not one sense at a time, just one sense, the one sense that makes sense for you. Let's get started with our meditation. Find a place to get settled where you may not be disturbed. You can lay down, sit, stand, or even choose to walk as you do this practice. Start when you feel comfortable by taking three long, slow, deep breaths. As you finish your third breath, start tuning into what you see around you. Notice some of the finer details of things that you see. Notice colors, shapes, and patterns. Notice objects that are near you or further away. What are five things you see? You can say them aloud or to yourself. As we move into your other senses, feel free to close your eyes where you feel safe enough to do so and if the circumstances allow. This may enhance your experience of the other senses. As you continue to take slow, deep breaths, start tuning into what you can touch and feel around you. You may notice things like the texture of the object that's supporting you, whether that be a chair, the bed, or the ground. You may notice the touch and feel of the clothes that you're wearing or body parts touching one another, like your hands on your thighs if you're sitting. You may also touch things that are around you. Notice the texture of the things that you feel. What are four things you can touch or feel? You can say them aloud or to yourself. As you continue to take slow, deep breaths Start tuning into what you can hear around you. Don't judge the sound you hear by labeling it positive or negative. Just notice it. Notice sounds that are close to you. You may even notice the sound of your own breathing. Now try to notice sounds that are further away further away than you thought you could hear. What are three things you hear? You can say them aloud or to yourself.
As you continue to take slow, deep breaths, start tuning into what you can smell. Notice scents that may be on you, like soap or deodorant. Notice smells that may be in your environment. Are there any distinctive scents? Don't judge what you smell, simply notice it. What are two things you smell? You can say them aloud or to yourself. As you continue to take slow, deep breaths, start tuning into what you can taste. If you have something to eat or drink around you, I invite you to take a bite or a sip as we move into taste. If you don't have anything to taste, notice tastes from something you may have just consumed or concentrate on sensations within your mouth like how your tongue sits in your mouth, or if your mouth is dry or moist. If you have something to taste, apply the principles we've used with our other senses. Notice the flavors of what you taste. What distinct ingredients do you detect? Notice the textures of what you're tasting. What is one thing you taste? You can say it aloud or to yourself. As we wrap up this meditation, if your eyes are closed, I invite you to open your eyes, take in the space around you by slowly and gently looking around from left to right and then up and down, re-familiarizing yourself with your environment. Take in a few more deep breaths. Notice how you feel as we come to a close. I hope these moments of pause and being present in the moment help bring calm and focus to the rest of your day. Until we connect again, take care, stay well, and start from within. Welcome back from the meditation. And if you need a moment to pause and transition after that meditation, feel free to just pause the video here and come back when you're ready. We'll be continuing to talk about variations to this meditation and also tips for facilitation. All right, welcome back. So when it comes to doing this meditation, there are a few variations that you can do. My again, my um, facilitation goes through the five, four, three, two, one grounding technique, but I encourage you to try out different variations and see what works for you. One of the variations you can try is to not do a countdown, to just go through the senses and say as many things um, that you want to say that you notice. So I could, instead of saying five things that I see around me, I could list 10 or 15. What happens is whenever you're done, then you just move on to the next sense. So it's, again, no countdown needed. The next variation could be just paying attention to what sense is coming up in the moment for you, what's most noticeable. And one of the ways that I do that is I check in every breath, right? So the first breath I may say, birds chirping, all right? I may take another breath and say, birds singing. Right? So I'm noticing that my hearing sense is the one that's being activated. And then I may take another breath and notice 
cool air, right? So that's that sense of touch, right? Dog barking, back to hearing. Lavender candle, sense of smell. And obviously you don't have to say like I just did, sense of smell, sense of hearing, but you can again, just speak what you're noticing based on whichever sense is being activated in that moment. Okay, the other variation is to take a minute, right? A minute moment instead of a longer mindful moment. So if you're in a place where you are perhaps around people or you're in a presentation, you're in a meeting and you don't have time to pause and do a five to 10 minute meditation, as you really strengthen your self-command muscle, you're going to be able to just do this meditation quickly. Check in with yourself. Bring your mind and body back to the moment. Um, and an example of that may be in a meeting, right? If I find myself again getting agitated or activated or perhaps just not focused, racing thoughts, I may take a deep breath and I may just for myself, right? Like, what do I notice? What do I see? And I might just in my head, name a few things. Or I might just actually right, rub my fingers together and notice that sense of touch. It can take 10 seconds, it can take 30 seconds, but just doing a quick moment to bring that mind-body connection together is really useful if you need it. That helps you again, pause some of that survivor brain and activate that sage brain, which helps us to be compassionate, innovative, creative, make decisive decisions, and also again, take actions that are aligned with our core values. The fourth variation is that you could do this meditation um, as you journal or doodle so that you might write down or draw some of the things that are coming up for you. And my final variation that I want to share is that you could just focus in on one sense and that's it instead of going through all five. So if for today, again, you just wanted to focus on the sense of touch, then that is what you could do. Now, if you plan on facilitating this meditation um, with your team, with your organization, with your loved ones, here are some of the facilitation tips I have. My first tip always will be to try using this meditation your, yourself first before you facilitate it with others. It's important for you to understand what it feels like to slow down and be in your body. Additionally, you want to consider the conditions that you needed to actually um, do this meditation fully. How much time did it take you to pause and be aware of your senses? And so when you facilitate, you want to ensure that there's enough time for people to actually explore their senses and not feel rushed during this meditation. My second facilitation tip would be to consider the space that you're going to be facilitating in. How might you set the stage for reflection and for an embodied practice? So if you have access to the outdoors or a more spacious environment, could you lead this out there to give again folks a different type of um, sensory engagement? And the reality is, is that meditations are things that we can take with us and integrate anywhere and at any time. So it's not about finding the perfect environment, but if you do get an opportunity to set the stage, why not? So consider what kind of elements um, you can add to your environment that would help to enhance the experience for your participants. Perhaps that's aromatherapy, light music, comfortable seating, um, open floor space or soft lighting. And you want to be careful with aromatherapy, again, because people do have sensitivities to smells. So consider that when you are thinking about adding those elements into your space. My third facilitation tip is to pause and leave room for silence. So again, if you're facilitating this and everyone's going to be doing this meditation at the same time, really take care not to rush through it. You want to give ample time for breath, and for the observation period. So sometimes gentle music or soothing sounds in the background can help us as facilitators to really slow down and give that spaciousness. My next tip is to be mindful of what you're doing before or after this meditation. 
So beyond the, the pausing and allowing for silence during the meditation, you want to be mindful that you're creating space for reflection, um, processing before or after the meditation. So if you are having people rush around and do things really swiftly before you get started, that could be challenging for them to then drop into a mindful space. Same token, if you afterwards are like, all right, let's go, and you have folks rushing again, it can take away from participants experience overall. So what do you have planned after this meditation, right? How might you give participants a heads up about what's to come and then still give them some space and transition time so that they can ready themselves to be in a different headspace? And my last tip is to just encourage, encourage variations. Um, if you're going to facilitate this for the first time with the full group, you may not, you know, put variations into the mix. But if it's a meditation that you're going to be coming back to and having people do um, more than once, consider sharing some of the variations. And instead of doing a guided meditation for everyone at one time, you can give people 10 to 15 minutes of open time and they can do the meditation in whichever way serves them best. I strongly encourage variations. And again, try the variations out for yourself before sharing them with those who you are going to be facilitating. All right, so that's it for today. I encourage you to build your own practices around pausing, around being present in the moment, um, just getting keenly aware of your feelings and sensations and what you're noticing in your body. Whether it's this meditation, another exercise from our Start From Within series, or any practice that you do on a regular basis, the point is just do it. Pause, reflect, breathe, notice, and then act or rest. Whatever your body is asking you to do in that moment. If you found this video useful, I would love for you to share it with other folks by having them go to startfromwithin.com. Um, you can also stay in touch with me on these social medias, got Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it. I can also be found on the TikToks. <laughs> Have a great day. Until we connect again, take care, stay well, and remember, start from within.